Uh, I'd like to welcome uh, everyone to what I think will be an extremely stimulating discussion about Brazil, about Bolsonaro, and about the devastation which is accelerated by Bolsonaro in the Amazon and throughout the country. Can I say that the, this explosive and turbulent development in Brazil is uh, a mirror in a sense of some of the developments in the United States and throughout the continent and, and, and internationally. We've seen a enormous interest in Brazil, largely because of the rise of the PT, a workers' party which really has had enormous uh, popularity and significance internationally, has carried out significant reforms and has then ended up in a somewhat dismal uh, performance in the last election once Lula was taken out as the uh, candidate. And we see that Bolsonaro, a complete opportunist, has moved in, but then cemented himself in power. And uh, what a mess he's made of uh, Brazil. So we see a huge decline. We see a maddened and deranged man in power doing the most absurd things, courting uh, COVID and uh, getting it and then boasting of it in power with great brutality, unregulating all controls over the environment and part of a capitalist system which is determined to raise the rate of profit at the expense of the people and more uh, especially at the expense of, of nature. And we, the questions now is, you know, how do we respond? How do Brazilian socialists and scientists see the development with the Amazon ablaze at various times, with science repudiated and all controls removed, with COVID infections soaring and really a complete and effectual response from government? and massive unemployment and impoverishment for people who have just climbed out of poverty and are slipping back into it again. Now, we're very privileged to have uh, two eminent scientists who are socialists from Brazil. And could I introduce, first of all, Taina Reis, who is a researcher in agrarian economies and has particular interest in uh, rural workers' health. And Raquel Negarro, a botanist and scientist on plant conservation and ecology at uh, Kew Gardens. She has participated in one of our previous discussions. I'd like to welcome you both. And, and I think we're going to have an, a really stimulating discussion and you have sufficient time for a lot of contributions from, from others. Could I say that we'll start first of all with uh, Taina, uh, who will give an overview of Brazil. For those who sometimes are not completely up to date with Brazil, she'll deal with some of the broad developments and then some of the more specific political points. And then to be followed by Raquel, who will deal with the economic and the ecological and environmental devastation of Brazil at this moment. Tana, I can give you 20 minutes to start, maybe a little more, but let's see how you do. Uh, we welcome you and thank you for your contribution. From where are you speaking from, Sao Paulo? Mm. I'm speaking from a city called São Carlos, is okay. St. Charles, is the, the country of São Paulo. Uh, let me uh, tell you something. Uh, Raquel said to me that she's trying to get in. I don't know if you have to accept her in the call or something, but she's I trying look, to get I'll in. I'll work on that. You go ahead and I'll okay. mute myself and, and we look forward to your contributions. Mm. Okay, okay. Well, it's really nice to be with you today. Uh, I start by apologizing for my English, which is not so good, but I'll do my best to, to communicate here. I made a, I'm sorry. I made a, a little script to follow for that I don't lose too much time trying to remember the words, the translation of some words. So anyway, I'm starting now. Talking about Brazil is always complex. Uh, there are 500 years of history since colonization. Remembering that this colonization meant the genocide of a large number of indigenous in addiction to their enslavement. So I'll try to present a brief resumption of Brazil's social formation. Thus, is, it is possible to understand that what we are going through today in the country did not start with Bolsonaro, 
is a reflection of a deeply conservative historical social construction. And this national formation has to do obviously with the insertion of Brazil in a globalized capitalism. So I believe if it can be said that Brazil is always the country of tomorrow, this is no accident. It's not a flaw of capitalism that is so, but a success. If we think of a globalized capitalism and not close within the borders of the country, Brazil has a position in world geopolitics, which has changed a little bit for a brief period, but anyway, his position in this geopolitics. Uh, in the colonial period and in the imperial period too, the country was politically organized by rural oligarchies based also on the slavery of black Africans. So the whole economic, political and social system was founded on slavery. And here we can already see the root of the racism that remains in society today. If today we can talk about structural racism and patriarchy and a specific kind of capitalism, this structure has been formed since the colonial period. In that period, Brazil was basically a primary export economy based on large plantations and monoculture. The main products have changed over time. So sugarcane, coffee, and today soy, orange juice, sugar, ethanol, meat. But we have never stopped being a supplier of raw materials worldwide. Even with the Republic, the country's agrarian logic remained for a long time. There was an industrialization initiative in the 20th century and the creation of Petrobras is an example of this, uh, with the emergence of new elites, industrialists, bankers, among others, but the agrarian elite didn't cease to have strength and power. And the state was crucial to that, regulating conflicts between these class fractions. But we, can, but we can't try to understand a country without understanding its position on the international scene. For example, the Brazilian military dictatorship, which somehow responded to internal conflicts in the country, also has been, but also has been proven through several researches that had had influence not only from the American government, but also from the English. It was a period of dictatorships in Latin America, the 60s. The president who was overthrown with the military coup had some progressive initiatives. One example being the land issue. He even made a specific law that claimed to have the objective of carrying out agrarian reform. But in practice, it was a legislation focused on the modernization of agriculture in line with, with capitalist interests, which mainly benefit big landowners. This law didn't actually propose structural changes in the land issue. So after the military dictatorship was established, the law remained. So this politician was progressive, but even, even the progressive of him wasn't enough. After 30 years of dictatorship, there was a democratic opening in 1989. It was the first presidential election in which Lula ran for the first time. At that time, he was a still very, we can say, exotic figure. He was still a figure who posed some threat. Bearded, unionist, the way he spoke could be understood as aggressive. And this changed profoundly in the year he was elected in 2002. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about PT in power. Uh, then he was elected in 2002, but in, it's assumed in 2003. So more than 10 years after the first election he participated in. At that time of Lula's election, it was said in Brazil that he was Lula peace and love in a suit and a tie with a soffits, soffits speech and proposing to make a series of agreements to achieve the election. These agreements made it possible the election of Lula. Agreements with big companies and all these things. So of course, it's undeniable that the Lula government represents a significant change in the country, especially for the poorest. Policies on income distribution, education, and housing were extremely important, changing the country's position on the world hunger, hunger map, for example. However, he did not stop financing the, the elites, including the agrarian elites. 
through policies, credits, and tax exemptions. The agrarian elite at that time were no longer just the big farmers, but also transnational companies using the nation's money for the production of commodities. The popular support, I believe, and I may be being frivolous in my speech, was much more centralized in the figure of Lula than in PT. Perhaps in the first election, there was still a greater proximity between the party and the figure of Lula. And I need to say something about the, the text David sent me, I don't know if he sent you to, uh, of Eduardo Fredman about the documentary, documentary The Edge of Democracy that showed Dilma's impeachment project, process. Uh, in, the, in the text, he says that PT is a socialist party. PT was never a socialist party. Uh, in the party's letter, the foundation, uh, there's nothing about socialism. The party never wanted to fight capitalism, but make it at least less aggressive to people, to the working class. And I believe the agreements the party and Lula made to guarantee the election is an example of this. They were never socialists. So, but yes, I believe that the party, despite being in power, has failed to build strong leadership. In fact, Lula's figure has become much larger than the party. Then Dilma was elected, much being attached with Lula figure. And after 12 years of PT government, the re-election of Dilma in 2014 was really, really difficult. There, and there are many, many, many interpretations of this team. And honestly, I don't feel so confident about doing this analysis because on the one hand, we can also understand that the long period uh, of the PT government had eroded public opinion about the party and the media had an essential part in this. They attacked Lula and PT since the beginning. Also, those elites were no longer satisfied with the government. Dilma wasn't Lula, first of all. And more, more than PT, Lula's strength, Lula strength explains all the maneuvers made by the right-wing parties with the media and the judiciary power after the coup against Dilma so that his figure would be discredited, including preventing him from running for the election in 2018 and, and, and sending him to jail, even though there's no actual reason for that. At the time, I even heard people saying that they would vote for Lula if he was running, but as there was no, er, no but as there was another candidate for the PT, they would vote for Bolsonaro. And this seems absurd, but it happened. And this is an interesting analysis, actually. And well, I'm going to talk about Bolsonaro in power now. And certainly Bolsonaro gained strength with the anti-PT wave that was being built since 2013 by traditional right-wing parties such as PSDB, for example, and other affiliated movements and the media, obviously. Also, Bolsonaro appears as a symbolic figure that will solve all the problems of the nation and the corruption. A shallow speech, obviously, but saying what people wanted to listen. Recalling that the country at that time was no longer having the levels of development and what development even means can also be questioned but didn't have the, the levels of development of the first years of Lula's government. After the coup, social rights were attacked head on, growing unemployment and reception, et cetera. As I said, the media was attacking Lula and Petit every day since he was elected. Several corruption scandals were associated with Lula and Petit with or without evidence. And that same elite, that Lula made his agreements in the past were organized in the coup and in defense of Bolsonaro. So the right-wing parties built this attack on Lula and PT over the years, but it was Bolsonaro who actually benefited with that. Of course, the role of Protestant churches is also very important at this time, but there are many more explanations for the rise of Bolsonaro related also to a culture that maintains much of its colonial culture, the way of the Brazilian society think. Next week, for example, will happen an important Congress of Social Sciences in Brazil, 
And there are several moments of discussion about this. A lot of people are thanking and researching this team. Brazilian democracy, the rise of Bolsonaro, the PT government, etc. And well, the left parties and movements certainly did not expect his rise, Bolsonaro's rise, nor is the, the right parties, I think. They were all taken a little by surprise with the rise of Bolsonaro figure, who until a few years uh, before was a left in stock for most traditional politicians. Some politicians later understanding the rise of Bolsonaro tried to attach with him. The same politicians that today denied any kind of proximity with Bolsonaro. But well, we can't say, we can't, we can't say uh, that his election was an accident. It wasn't. The media and some right wing parties uh, thought they could benefit of his election and work for it, for it. I believe they didn't imagine the dimension of the chaos it would be in stored. In stored. Uh, and now talking a little about, about if can Bolsonaro be removed from, from power. Many requests for impeachment have already been filed with the Chamber of Deputies and none of them have been forwarded. The power and control that Bolsonaro has over the legislature is huge. So I personally believe that if so far with everything that has happened with the entire omission of Bolsonaro in, related, in relation to various issues, the pandemic's one of them, but the recent fires in Amazon, the proved allegations of corruptions involving family members, the frequent disruption of legislative current. If he hasn't been removed so far, I don't believe he can be removed until the end of his term. But there's always hope because there are arrangements of power that do not reach the average citizen. So we don't know what may actually be happening in the political game. When Dilma's impeachment started to be talked about, we didn't imagine that it would actually take effect, but it did. But we, and, and we also have today the rise uh, of social movements organizing themselves in resistance, which is always important for some change. As the time of the government passed by, many reports began to appear of Bolsonaro votes regretting their vote, saying they were mistaken. But to the left, everything Bolsonaro did was according to his proposal, conservative, racist, sexist, elitist, aligned with neoliberal principles. To some of his actions, his base just shut eyes. Do you know that he actually said that the fires in Amazon were orchestrated by Leonardo DiCaprio and non-governmental organizations? And some people really did believe that as also they believe that China is trying to impose communism in Brazil and all sort of crazy, crazy ideas, crazy things. But these are the people, the anti-vaccine people, the flat earth people. They aren't majority, but they exist. And the way in which Bolsonaro is dealing with the pandemic is a very important factor for the weakening of his image among part of the electorate in addition to the countless reports of corruption involving his children. But unfortunately, the ideological construction made around the image of Bolsonaro is still strong and the anti-PT speech, is, it still remains today. I mean, PT is not in power since 2016 and we, we still hear people say, oh, but PT destroyed the country. And everything that's happening now, some people said, oh, but this is the, the heritage of PT government. So it's really sad actually. So it's not, different, it's not difficult to find people reproducing the president's speech. Although we also know that on social media, on social networks, the, the use of robots is very frequent. In any case, definitely the, the, the defeat of, the Trump, of Trump certainly weakens even more the government. In any case, if Bolsonaro were removed, that wouldn't necessarily represent a better life for workers, perhaps less worse. In relation to the pandemic, another direction of the state could represent effective actions, 
because until now this has not happened. Bolsonaro hasn't even spent the money that was destined for measures to control the pandemic. In relation to the devastation of the Amazon, I do not believe that very effective measures will be taken if Bolsonaro were removed, because this devastation process has been going on for many, many, many years. Of course, it has now intensified wildly, but the interests involved in the destruction of the Amazon have to do with arrangements that can be, can be relied with Bolsonaro, but do not depend on it. And these arrangements have to do precisely with the Brazilian social formation and the country positions in the world geopolitics. Politics, I don't know. And well, if we have this internal organization based on a colonial land holding, land holding of primary production for export, in short, these rural elites have remained in power for more than 500 years, despite today having a, a different guise. Of course, in relation to the production of some commodities today, we have the presence of large transnational companies, as I already said. But that did not exclude the country's agrarian elite. They just, it just adapt. Of course, there are other elites in Brazil. And again, uh, the state plays a very important part rearranging uh, the interests of these elites. But in conclusion, uh, David sent us a, a question very interesting about the, the re-emerging of the left about, um, anyway, it is very difficult to make predictions of this kind because no matter how much the left has points in common, the different parties of the left has points in common, it internally has also a lot of divergence and an example of this can be seen in the local elections in the city of Sao Paulo, for example, in which PT chose to launch a candidate which very low, with very, which no, sorry, with very low expression instead of supporting uh, PSOL in the first round. After the PSOL went to the second round, PT showed support, including, inclusive today is the election. So probably I have some information about this right now in Sao Paulo. Uh, and yes, well, the low, in the local elections, we are seeing a left re-emerging in the main capitals of the country. But for a federal election, I don't know. I believe in, in a way through center, uh, like a center right candidate, which is actually a right, a right party, a right candidate, but with a cape of renovation. I don't know if this is clear. Uh, not necessarily the weakening of Bolsonaro figure represents the, right, the rise of the left again. And we need to see, we need to see what the left will do until 2022. And well, the local elections now are really important because of this too. But for Bolsonaro, I don't think, uh, another question David sent, sent us is, well, I don't think uh, it has a basis because of the Bolsa Familia. Mainly because Bolsa Familia is really Lula's face. And Bolsonaro didn't even try to, to use Bolsa Familia uh, as, as something to capitalize electors and the basis of PT, actually. And also because Bolsa Familia has been suffering cuts from some years, uh, for some years now. And I think it's not Bolsa Familia that Bolsonaro can capitalize on for its basis, but much more is figure, you know, the figure of a myth, the figure of a hero a strong and fair man or something like that. So anyway, I, I really try to communicate here. I hope you understood. And well, that's it. Thanks a lot. Well, thanks so much, uh, Ten. I think you gave us a really excellent introduction and you also did uh, develop some of the big themes about oligarch uh, elite, uh, the landed uh, elite and the way in which uh, multinationals have moved in in, in Brazil. Uh, and by the way, I think you came over word perfect. So you, you can, you know, I think that was, that was terrific. Thanks so much. Um, I'd like now to introduce Raquel, if you'd uh, show your face there by uh, 
putting the video forward. Okay. Raquel is, uh, as I mentioned, um, is a botanist and a scientist on plant conservation and ecology at uh, Kew Gardens. And uh, she'll be speaking, I think, more to the environmental degradation under Bolsonaro and uh, in Brazil at this time. Thanks, Raquel. Uh, come in, please. <clears throat> Raquel, your microphone is muted. You need to unmute the mic. Uh, Dave, could you unmute Raquel? Oh, there we are. Mm. Ah, no. Yeah, thank you very much, everybody, for coming and try to understand um, a little bit about Brazil and what's going on there. And yeah, it's my pleasure to be here to talk about also environment, which, which is like my field. But I was I will take some questions from uh, about the general politics in Brazil to try to explain uh, how the things are linked. And I will start with this um, the old joke about Brazil is the country of tomorrow and could be forever. This is this like a old joke, like two two way joke, and um, something we say is a country where it could be the future, but also is the, is the um, country when everything is left for tomorrow. So it's a kind of uh, way of life in Brazil sometimes. And this is like um, a bit how the politics works in general. When, when the government, trying to do something but we we can't look this like just in the country but we have to look this linked to the global politics and how the global capitalism affect brazil and uh, and i think this uh, i agree that uh with this phrase this joke happens but it's not just the fault like fault from governments which tried something like pity or, um, and, and so, but actually is, if we look for the entire Latin America, for like, especially in the, in 2000, was a lot of um, pressure on the Brazil, Bolivia, Argentina, to follow like the rules for, from Davos, from Mondial Bank, FMI, and then, that is like the same politics, money before people. And, um, and some examples, I was trying to think about this to explain how the things link it. For example, in Cochabamba in 2000, uh, was a big pressure because Bolivia, there is in that time not so many companies or whatever, they have water in Cochabamba and was a huge pressure to privatization, even the water and was a, a reaction, like a very popular movement to change this, um, to change this deals between governments and the big capitals and uh, made in like in huge experience. It's like the same which happens in Brazil when Brazil just did like the privatization, uh, privatize like Eletrobras and other uh, big companies, startup companies, and uh, and then came more recession, more um, environmental exploitation, people exploitation, environmental exploitation, and everything. So something uh, this question about uh, if Bolsonaro is going to be removed or not. Um, I was reading something about Galeano. Sometimes Galeano asks, ah, what is the Latin America future? And he says, that is like, I don't know how to, how to say about Latin America future, but I could, uh, we could think what is Latin America challenge. So if Bolsonaro is, haven't lived until so far, because there were so many things happening, like, um, First was the um, in, was the manipulation of elections, and then in, they attacked like 
Jeje Thierry with his sons. And the, for, for me, like environmental and for people uh, seeing the environmental situation, the worst was when he fired le, the president of the Insti National Institute for Spatial Research. And he supported, like Bolsonaro supporters, make like they orchestrate like a deal was the day of fire dia do fogo in august last log, august last year and by whatsapp they decide to support bolsonaro they are putting fire in amazon so this was that huge impact in amazon forest was and nothing happens and i don't know if maybe if you could uh, watch the movie, uh, like during a meeting, like uh, uh, from ministers, Bolsonaro after Moro, Sergio Moro leave, leave the power, leave the government, the Minister of Judges, they had like a meeting and the Minister the, of Environment, we start to calling him like a Minister of Anti-Environment, uh, which is Ricardo Salles. He was just telling about, uh, we, we should, like in this moment, every, every the media is just looking for COVID. So let's do uh, the regulamentation of law and do and pass everything from infrasphere of the power. So um, it's very interesting. He was really uh, he, he was telling we have to they say passar a boiadas like like open the doors and leave the calls like just go. So and it was like literally what he was meaning because they could put fire in the in the Amazon and because the COVID they could just expand the the areas for um, like grow to have my more livestock farming and more exploitation in Amazon. So and the Coming back to Galliano uh, thinking that time, he was telling, what's the challenge for Latin America? It's like, it became like the, just the caricatures from the North, just follow the si same system based in, in consume and violence. And we, we just, we have maybe to offer another alternative uh, in a different way of life for Latin America. but. I think you you are trying that you everybody at the works international networking maybe are trying to look for what is the alternative way of life and or and we see that this system uh, being european more european or america that's with it's not going to be like the solution for latin america and uh, and because all the time people was convinced that to do like um, imitation about this other way of life, there is a very like a difficulty, like a, a, a hard understanding how to change the situation, how to get this better life, this better system, which is not based in big production and um, exploitation of all of the resource. And I think some movements like MST, when we talked last week, was really under like this different way of life when they focus in agro agroecology or in small production and organic food and etc. So, but this need to gain scale and what we could do to get this. And Another thing that I could say, maybe I really hope that uh, under Bolsonaro and all, all of attacks he has been doing for indigenous people, he's really trying to clean the, the population, the minorities. He just is doing a kind of incentive to um, people to catch miners and loggers invade indigenous land and and bring the disease and COVID especially now <laughs> to the indigenous people. But at least the indigenous people and people from uh, from peripheries like suburbs, they it's the same thing could be bad because 
Bolsonaro was using internet massification robots to manipulate elections and to get the power. For the other side, these communities are using the same technology. They don't, they didn't, they haven't created this, but they are using this to defend themselves against the, those struggles. So they are changing their communities and they are showing this to the international groups and getting support from outside, which is really, really important for them. And um, let's see something more. And when we think uh, what's going on with the environment in Bolsonaro is worse than Lula and Jim in the few years or before. So I would say is that before with the PT um, government was not perfect. And there is like so many struggles. For example, the huge, huge, like big, um, in prime, uh, big companies or big things build, like everybody should must hear about uh, Belo Monte Dam in Amazon, which was a big dam who was displacing lots of indigenous and local communities and actually bringing lots of stand of people to there and take out the, the um, lands and uh, also like the flora fla fauna was threatening and um, also the Santo Antonio uh, dam, hydropower electric dam uh, plant. This was like worst in, in, in Brazilian Amazon in Porto Velho because there is, I remember Lula was really annoyed when they, <laughs> when they were like a catch fish and was like a blind catch catch fish was a fish in some caves. They were like uh, kind of alb albine, like white and can see nothing. And Lula was really annoyed because he couldn't, there was, this dam was blocked, was delayed because of this catch fish, which was endangered. And he moves everything to change the law and to change the, the people who, they, who did like the biology, the biology uh, assessments and he said, no, you have to go forward with this plant and I don't mind. And then when they solve this problem, they, they okay, it's fine. We can put like this, this catfish on the side and that, let's see. And then they found like um, produced by this uh, plant, uh, this area, this company, was um, poisoning, they were poisoning the water. And, um, and then they say, no, it's fine. We can get like the Lulos, ah, we are getting like the specialists from, from India or every, 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 anywhere to solve this problem. And now if we look like this place, Puerto Velho is the higher levels of cancer in Brazil. So in the place, the community is like, uh, indigenous community, um, agriculture, like people from farms, community, and indigenous mostly. And uh, everybody has like, everybody not, but they have like the, the biggest hospital for cancer, to treat cancer in this area. And I would expect it from the forest or in the Amazon, less cancer than in another place. But the pollution in water and is like much higher than any anywhere in Brazil, and not just because this um, the mining and hydroelectric power plant, but also because the agribusiness and soya beans production and livestock farming and etc. So this this means was not and now is worse because even that even this happens past in the future in in the past with Lula government other things in law was was important for example Brazil was signing all of the targets to keep biodiversity like the convention of Biolo biological diversity was ratified was signed by Brazil 
and they create like instruments to put this in action and um, was the first time Brazil has how to do how to deal and how produce assessments of risk of extinction they have for the first time in Lula um, government and uh, a law for management of um, residuals and um, also environmental education policies and but on, on the, on the, for the other side is like attacks like the changing of um, the forestal code which was was made in 1965 and was more the more important law in the perfect law in environmental um, field and was this Brazilian law. And then in 2012, this was like very much destroyed and we lost this. And now it's much worse than in 2012. And uh, yes, I think we have, um, I think my time is running out, but I would say, I don't know what's going on, what, what is the next step, how the things is, is going. But I think in this moment, we are very pessimist. But if we look for the future, we need to be optimist because we have like um, a people in Brazil is really resistant and also really creative. So even we don't have the, the ways to produce like a, um, right now to produce technology or something, the Brazilian like communities, I'm not telling about the capitalist, uh, the Brazilian capitalist class. This doesn't exist because I think the capitalist class in Brazil is from outside Brazil. And, um, but I think the people from Brazil, the communities, they're really creative and they could, they use all of this to produce any kind of voice and communication to um, to the world and this i think is the what happens is like now they are resisting because outside are people listening and supporting this small community and pressure the government because it could be much worse with bolsonaro if if we didn't have like this pressure from outside when it was the fires in amazon or etc so yeah, I think I will finish here and we can discuss more. Thank okay. you. Look, thank you so much, uh, Raquel and uh, to Tiana. Do remember that there will be an, an opportunity to respond to questions at the, particularly at the end. Let's have a full discussion. Could I mention that, um, you know, having uh, China and uh, Raquel are, are not accidental figures. Uh, apparently, you two have been working together politically, at least certainly in, in your student days and thereafter. So we, you know, sometime I'd like you to reflect maybe in, in, the, in the conclusion about how you've worked together either in the PT or PSOL and, uh, you know, the, the kind of political work that the left is doing to try and unify the left and, the, uh, and, and fight for the working class. I think in both discussions we've seen the critical factor in relation to the growth of, of these uh, Bonapartist leaders such as, as Bolsonaro, these uh, brutal semi-dictatorships uh, which have grown, the use of the media, and uh, the question was raised there about robots or bots, B-O-T-S, you know, in, in accelerating different opinion and how the media can also be used, you know, to defend the people. And we can also see, also a major theme is the use and misuse of the uh, question of uh, tax on corruption. So you can find that some of those who are most uh, involved in uh, corruption are actually leading campaigns and actually gaining support, even while you know their party political factions, their families are uh, actually deeply involved. So we, you know, we, one of the things that we have to work to as uh, Marxists is to see you know the substance below the surface and to be able to understand these uh, these developments. Um, you know, the tomorrow is not coming. Um, we've seen the economic giant that was uh, discussed as Brazil was put forward in the 1970s and early 80s as is now in, in considerable disarray, um, as we've uh, now heard. 
I'd like uh, people to indicate, um, you know, the, if they would like to speak, please indicate on the um, on the screen. If you go there to your your name, and then you can click onto that and uh, put put your name up. While we, uh, I don't see any as yet. While we do that, please uh, do indicate. Maybe we could have contributions. I see Ed. Yes, you're there. Maybe we could have, I'd like to welcome and, and invite contributions from Nara, I think it is, who's um, coming and representing democracy for Brazil in this discussion. I'd love to hear from, from you. And maybe Silvana Hart, maybe you'd like to, you know, also contribute. So please, you know, let's bring our expertise and our perspectives into the debate and uh, let's see how we can have a, a you know, a really good discussion. Um, Ed, would you like to come in and start the process of discussion? Mm. Th thank you, thank you, David. Well, well, th thank you um, to uh, Raquel and Tan Tanya for for your initial opening remarks. Very, very interesting um, what you've reported. My, I have a question, and uh, that is, um, Brazil obviously at the moment is under a lot of pressure from global economic interests to pursue a policy of deforestation which is uh, so damaging to the ecology of the planet as a whole um if we get a government in brazil that wants to move to a more ecologically responsible f method of running the economy, what are the alternatives for the way the economy should be operating so that Brazil can retain its position as a, as a, as a nation which can support its population, can participate on world markets and so on, um, obviously, if, if, if those big multinationals that are, that, that are doing the logging and burning the rainforest, if they are defied, if their wishes are defied, it's going to take a big change in the economy. So what, what is the alternative way of operating the economy so that Brazil can retain and increase its, its prosperity? in relation to global economic development um, and at the same time operate in an environmentally responsible way. Yeah, would you like, I, could I respond now? I don't know if, what is the, if they want another question or as you want. Um, could you uh, make a note now? I'd like to encourage a little more discussion so it's not a Q&A. Uh, okay. So much as, as a big a, a big a in the end, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So it, I wondered if maybe Nara or anyone else would like to come in in the discussion. I'm just scanning to see who, you know, who may be maybe wanting to make a comment. Um, to put a question. Mm. I can uh, talk to you a little bit if you want. Okay. Well, look, go ahead then, please, Tina. Okay. Uh, my name is Silvana, and uh, I am from Democracy of Brazil in Oxford. Um, also, I'm a member of uh, PT in London, but I'm not talking uh, in behalf of them. Uh, I think uh, uh, as long as Bolsonaro is in power, we, 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 will, not, we, will, not, we will not have uh, opportunity to see anything uh, better because he's not worried about um, uh, what is happening in Amazon or with the Indians or with the poor people. Uh, he's just uh, worried about himself and his family. So um, the best way would be to take him from power, but uh, with the COVID it's very hard for the, um, the movement, the social movements to go to the streets and fight to take him out. Also, uh, he's working for the elite. 
So for the elite, it's not uh, good for him to leave because everything that they want, he's uh, doing to them, uh, they, he's giving to them. Like um, the salary of the poor, the, uh, the workers are lower than ever. So if they can hire people for the less money, they say, oh, you stay here. If there is work, I will pay you. And in the end of the month, they don't even have like a minimum, salario minimum is like a um, minimal um, weight. There is nothing. They don't have anything anymore. Even uh, if they want to retire at this moment, they are, they are like uh, not moving the line around. They're not moving people in a line to get retirement plan. So he's making everything difficult. It's not that he's there. He's just sitting there and destroying the democracy. He's there to destroy everything that was done for the last 30 years. He's not worried about uh, doing something good for the people. He just, you know, sitting there, make a statement, silly statement like uh, um, uh, funny uh, phrases. Like um, some people say that he talks like Hitler, like make people laugh, but it's not um, a good laugh. It's not, it's not something that I would laugh about because it's always phrase of uh, discriminating like black people, poor people, Indians. So it's always like phrases that people laugh because they are in their, his side, but for us that, um, think more like about how democracy would be is not is not laughable. So I think um, with this election, we showed to him that we are not happy what he's doing is in power. But we we need to work from the base, we need to work from the bottom that we can um, uh, tell the people what's happening in Brazil because you see, the media is uh, is it's not that uh, when he talks about these remarks, they don't like. But when he's doing the economic uh, um, situation, they are happy with him. So they don't allow the PT to go in on front of television to tell them what they think. So because global, he they have all, all the the channels so people don't have internet sometimes so they just listen to what global say so is it is almost impossible to tell the people what's happening in brazil they don't know what's happening because it's like it's vague it's all lies they tell lies on the tv i've never seen like do you know trump like he, he goes to the television and say things that are not true so it's the same. Bolsonaro does over and over. He uses the Facebook. He blocks people that doesn't think of the same like him. He blocks people on the Twitter. So it's almost impossible for us to tell people what's happening. So um, I don't know. Are we going to work very hard to take him? Uh, I think we're going to need like a collusion, a co coalition, uh, co we're gonna need to have like a lot of uh, 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 parties from the left together in order to fight against Bolsonaro because I don't think PT would uh, be strong enough to to break all these um, um, this situation. It's like uh, you know they don't know they cannot get to the people. We try on YouTube. We have. Uh, we try to, to tell them what we have done. But when, uh, when Global say, like say, um, in 2004, for example, when uh, Lula was able to pay uh, what we owe to the, to the FBI, uh, no, to the, to the American bank, what we owe. They don't tell them that was uh, Lula who done it. When uh, Lula was able to uh, take all the extreme poverty, they say that was this. Uh, uh, that was uh, that was this. Um, um, how do they say? 
advance, but they don't say, oh, it was Lula and PT who done it. So they cover up, they don't say the whole truth. Even when they talk about something that happened between 13 years that PT was in power. So that's what I have to say because I didn't prepare myself to talk here. I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Silvana, that is uh, marvelous. Um, of course, we could all be a bit of, uh, better prepared in some way or other, but I, I, you know, we got some really original points there. And I do think you should know that uh, you know when the International Workers International Network is wanting to bring people together, um, you know, the reporting on Brazil is very episodic. Sometimes it's there and then it disappears completely, and then the Amazon burns and then it comes into stream again. But there's no consistent reporting and knowledge on the left and the labor movement of what is happening in Brazil. And so this is why your voice and the voice of others that we've heard today is so important. And if we work together with you and Wynn and you could be part of the networks that we're building, uh, that's a way of, of making sure that the Brazilian voice is heard, that of Brazilian labor particularly is heard you know, in, the, in the British labor movement and internationally. Um, I just want to add one thing, because uh, the poverty is higher than ever now again. We went back when uh, 2003, when uh, Lula was elected. So all the work that we have done to take the extreme poverty, Bolsonaro managed after the, uh, the coup of 2006, they were able to, to get back to the same level. I mean... People are dying of ang uh, uh, ang hunger, even though we are the, the third production of uh, food. I, I, we cannot understand how it, this happened, but that's what happens. Okay, uh, just one question I'd like to pose to, to everyone. Um, I've heard various reports, largely on the uh, uh, BBC, but also elsewhere, that in the Northeast, which is one of the most devastated uh, places of poverty and in Brazil, that the Bolsonaro has beefed up, has strengthened his position by offering uh, forms of the Bolsa Familia, giving giving out some money. You know, I think it's a hundred dollars. I'm not sure whether it's a week or a month, but anyway, some money which is uh, seen to be his money, his personal present to the people. You see, and that's uh, for for some desperately poor people. That's made some impression. Look, let's not immediately answer that question, but let me just throw into it. What tricks uh, can uh, a president you know, like Bolsonaro get up to to retain his position uh, even while it's uh, weakening? Uh, are there any other contributions or questions? Yes, uh, I think I can um, have a, a little bit. I can have a go. Um, I'm not sure who's speaking, but please go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, I'm Nara uh, from Democracy for Brazil, UK. Okay, great. Yeah. Mm. So thank you very much, uh, Raquel and um, Taina and Silvana for the the, the, the talk. Um, I'm Nara um, from Democracy for Brazil. I'm uh, also secretary of uh, the Brazilian Workers Party in London, PT, and I also coordinate the Free Lula Committee in London. Um, and, um, and and Democracy for Brazil, it's a collective, it's a group of uh, Brazilian people uh, from the community, um, which it was um, created, or it was like created within the community. And in 2016, when um, there was a coup in Brazil, the, that's why I would like to give a little bit of a background because I think it's important. I'm not sure if everyone here is aware of, uh, let's say, the last 50, 60 years from Brazil. So we came from the 1964 uh, uh, military coup and um, that lasted uh, more uh, around 26 years, let's say from 1964 to 1990 when we actually uh, uh, was the, we were able to elect the first president uh, that was the first time we we, we went to the, to the polls in 1989 actually 
um, during the dictatorship, uh, there was the military who actually started to explore the Amazon. They they created they created that uh, a, a, a road called Trans Amazonic um, Road where they start the whole thing for uh, exploiting and, um, and with um, with the multinationals, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So after that, we had a period of um, uh, a, a, a tent of neoliberal uh, governments in Brazil, and in, in with the the, the, the worst uh, was the, during the uh, Fernando Henrique Cardoso, which is between 1992. Uh, uh, 1994 and 2002, there was uh, a very neoliberal uh, government where they privatized privatizations, etc. And then uh, PT came in, into power for 13 years. They develop um, uh, develop many areas like social. Um, there was uh, it wasn't perfect. On, as Raquel said, he, uh, as Taina said, it wasn't perfect on the on the um, on the environment. And uh, however, I, I think this uh, at one point, I think that's the one that before 2012. I think the 12, 2012. At one point, we had one of the best uh, environmental law in, in in the world. At one point in the country. So, uh, and I remember I had this discussion with. Uh, Doctor, uh, with um, what's his name? Um, in, at LSE a few years ago, maybe 2012, when we had this discussion with um, I forgot him. He just he just passed away last year. But anyway, um, that's what I wanted to understand. At the moment, in Brazil, it's uh, we we don't we are not in a democracy. 2016, there was a coup, and and also uh, the 2018. Uh, Bolsonaro only was uh, able to, to to be elected for two reasons. One, because uh, they stopped, they prevented Law, uh, Lula to to uh, to run for president uh, using uh, something that we call lawfare, and um, and second, because there was a um, uh, the same uh, let's say strategy used by Trump, by the Brexit, which is the fake news. So that was the, whole, the only reason he is in power today. So what uh, I am uh, uh, to, to, find, to, to uh, finish my, my remarks, I would like to just say that I'm actually op optimistic. And I think that during the, uh, during the PT times, there, there were a lot of time and there was lots of things that happened where um, it, it creates like some some um, it helped to develop some social movements, some uh, resistance movements, which which is being uh, it, it's still there. There is there's still there a potential to to develop a, 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 a better resistance to the to these and and then maybe in 2022 we can get rid of them, we get rid of uh, Bolsonaro. We do have uh, uh, movements called Fora Bolsonaro and Stop Bolsonaro. We're trying to we're trying to to uh, get rid of him, but it it it, it, it being it's being really difficult because now. Uh, they uh, he made a, a deal with the centro that the, we call centro which is a big center which is the the, the big uh, the, the what is the most important uh, area in the politics to actually to govern the, the country so i just want to give a little bit of a background i'm not specialized uh, like raquel or, or things in environmental but i i've been uh, following the the discussions and um, and then uh, i just wanted to give this contribution to the to debate Thank you. Okay, thanks so much, uh, Nora. We're very keen to keep up the links uh, with the PT as you have uh, obviously the whole network of Brazilians in uh, London and probably throughout Europe too. So we're very keen to, you know, to keep in touch and to, to work with your networks too. Um, any other contributions? Uh, uh, Dimitrios. Please uh, come in. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, I, 
as uh, as you said, the, the information about uh, Brazil is very erratic, and uh, I don't follow closely what's happening there. But from what uh, from what I uh, I did follow, and what what I had tonight especially, it seems that uh, one interesting pattern emerges, which is the is not uh, is not um, uh, only in Brazil. And this is a situation where uh, there is a, uh, some sort of uh, reformist uh, government trying to do something better than uh, harsh capitalism. And uh, this quickly develops into a, a, a clash with, with the ruling elites. And, uh, and this, is, this is not, we have seen this again and again, we have seen it uh, in Greece, we have seen it uh, uh, in many countries. We, I, I think we can see it in Brazil as well. I mean, the, uh, the, the methods they used to get rid of, of Lula and his party, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, in fact, uh, a negation of democracy, exactly because democracy and capitalism nowadays cannot go together. And uh, also, uh, this probably has the, uh, the other side. Uh, it's a coin with another side. That, uh, getting rid of these dictators, getting rid of these uh, uh, regimes would probably start with a very simple, mild, uh, uh, very simple uh, demands for reform, for changes, for getting rid of uh, the worst aspects of these regimes of establishing democracy. But of course, again, this, uh, uh, well, if it gains uh, uh, ground and if it succeeds, it will again have to face the same, the same forces that uh, brought these regimes in, the, in power in the first hand. So uh, we should be very careful uh, uh, of what's going on in the I've, I've, so if you have to write a remember who said it, there will, there will probably be a need for a broad coalition in this fight, because this, uh, this negation of democracy it, uh, creates a lot of discontents. It, it, it creates rifts in the ruling classes. It creates uh, conditions that uh, could develop into revolutionary ones. Uh, Seamus. Um, Jabu, would you like to come in? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, good evening, everybody, in um, solidarity with Brazil. Um, I just wanted to make a comment around my interaction with understanding about Brazil was the shock of the killing of um, Mariel Franco, a, 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 a democratically elected politician. Uh, that was basically, uh, it just sent an eye opener because uh, she was challenging issues around police brutality in the inner cities, uh, things that go are going on in terms of how the poor are treated by the regime. It's, uh, it's, it, it's encouraging to see this mass democratic movement uh, grow out of Brazil in terms of challenging uh, Bolsonaro, but um, more than anything, uh, WIN is a, a great project to see how uh, the global uh, uh, countries are coming together to challenge these dictatorships. Because uh, whilst uh, we are, you know, uh, basically uh, forming these type of chats, uh, there are so many uh, aspects of these uh, countries that are involved in, 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 in repressive repressing uh, poor people from uh, uh, basically understanding their own autonomy. And uh, uh, Brazil is at the center of uh, human rights, uh, what to call um, uh, just basically not, not respecting uh, 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 people's, uh, uh, what to call right to self-determination. So the, 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 what to call the examples that were being given about the environmental catastrophes that could be a potential uh, to the Amazon and what, it, what they are doing, we must really intensify uh, the, the opposition to this. Thank you. 
thank you, Jobu. If I could uh, bring together some of the uh, questions, I'm sure that uh, you, Taina, and uh, Raquel have been noting these points. First of all, we had Ed's questions, which relate, first of all, to what resources are there to stabilize the Amazon basin and to be able to meet some of the requirements, you know, for an, to stop environmental degradation. Um, and then secondly, I think if I have it correctly, you know, what basis is there for a new economy, one which doesn't uh, depend on devastating the economy and uprooting uh, the indigenous people and bringing misery to, you know, the poorest of the poor in the rural areas. I think it's, it would be that. Uh, there have also been questions about, you know, these contestations in the ruling parties and the ruling class and the right wing. Uh, from me, there was a question about how to develop, I think it was also in others too, uh, how to develop a united front of the left so that there's not division. And I think from Seamus also a question of, in does how does the left look at the question of coalitions? If I should share some of the notes which um, Raquel wrote a while back, she mentioned very clearly that the, there are different states, something like in the United States of America. And in some of those states, uh, the Workers' Party is in a weaker position. And so there are alliances or coalitions with the right wing in those particular states. You know, is this justified or is this a disaster for the, uh, the left? And then, you know, we'd be very interested to know something more of the personal history, not all the details, but uh, of something of uh, Raquel and, and Tana, you've worked together. You know, how did you find working in a mass political organization? And, uh, you know, what were the advantages and what are the advances that were made and what were not? Uh, the whole series of questions. Maybe we could have some discussion on that. Um, well, let me just make sure there's no one else who's wanting to come in. Please indicate or just voice if you want to come in. Uh, but maybe not. Maybe, uh, Taina, would you like to come in now on some of those points and Raquel just pick up where China has not, uh, you know, covered the point. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I'll try to answer it. Uh, about Ed's question, uh, I really do not know. I mean, it's, I do, I have no idea how it would be possible an alternative economy with a more environmental concern, because this is not something that, as I said it's not something that's happening now this is being built in 500 years of history so where we the capitalism not only here but well i'm talking about brazil uh, is based also on the exploitation exploitation no this is spanish oh my god sorry uh no exploitations right i don't know that's right thank you thank you i thought oh my god i'm confusing the languages uh sorry uh, the capitalism is based on the exploitation of nature. This is capitalism. So an alternative, in, I think, is only if we end capitalism. <laughs> I don't think it's possible inside the, like, oh, a more human capitalism. And this kind of discussion that I think is, is absurd. It's not possible because it can be a human face in some place, somewhere, but it will be much more unhuman in other places because it's a global system, it's not a local um, Brazil. So now Brazil is really concerned about the forest and we're not burning everything. Okay, but we are somehow using some products of some other country and we're, I don't know, saving a lot of money because we're buying something from slave work somewhere in the world, I don't know. So I don't think, I don't even think it's possible. So I, I don't I don't, I can't answer your question, Ed. I'm sorry because I don't think it's possible. Uh, I think what is possible to be done is like, oh, okay, we are going to sign the agreement, the international agreements of I don't know climate changing. We're going to do some things here, some things there, but you know, 
finish the, the exploitation of nature, I don't think it's possible. This is capitalism. So they exploitate work, they exploitate nature. This is what capitalism do, right? Um, I want to talk just a little bit what, about what Silvana said. She said, well, Bolsonaro is working for the elite. I, I risk to say that so as the other government in different ways, obviously, we cannot ever, I, I, I don't like people who do here in Brazil, it's very common people say, oh, but Lula also did that. Uh, it's not a comparison, a comparison like if they were the same, but I don't think we, we can have any illusion that we have any other government in this country, in the history of this country that did not work for the elite. What we have were important governments that work a little bit for the people too, but they never stop working for the elite. I'll, I'll give you just one example. Uh, my main field of research is about sugarcane production, actually the sugarcane cutters and the uh, illness they, they get in work, working. And in 2008, Lula said that the, the businessmen of the sugarcane production in Brazil were the heroes of the country. And in that same year, we have research uh, showing people, workers dying in the sugarcane fields just for being really tired. People were just working and were really tired and were dying. In the same year, do you understand? But I mean, to me, that was when I said, Lula, I had with you. It's enough. I'm sorry. I understand all the, the gain that he brought to Brazil. This is obvious. We, we can't deny that. But I don't think we, we can have the illusion that he wasn't working for the elite too. I'm sorry, I'm, I really think that. Uh, and also, when we, th we think like Bolsonaro today, today, I mean, last year, he approved the reform of social security in Brazil, which is awful so people can retire like only when they're really old and they're almost already dead, it's terrible. But before this, with uh, after the coup of the Dilma's coup, the Temer uh, soon, who was a vice, and he assumed the the country, and he also approved a labor labor reform, and it was also terrible, terrible. And, and this is a project that is being. Oh, I don't know how to say that in English. It's a it's a, a project that's being constructed and putting put in action you know, for a long time, since the, the 2013 and the coup of Dilma, and this is being built. So Bolsonaro is an important piece in a, a much, much bigger construction that has to do with Brazilian part in the worldwide, anyway, politics. And just to finish, David, David, your question is, uh, I can't answer your question too. The questions here are too difficult. <laughs> How we can you uh, uh, think in a united front of the left? Oh my God. Uh, I mean, they're trying to do this so long and they're still fighting for this because I think that they have some internal difference that are crucial. I think in some moments they can't unite like against the social security reform or against Bolsonaro, they can unite it in specific uh, points. But I don't think they can think in a united project for the future. But this is me in talking now about my personal experience. I'm no longer a militant. I don't know, it's been 10 years. I mean, in, in, uh, in PT, when I met Raquel, we were militant in PT in the University of San, San Carlos. Uh, so I, I only know about what I see, about people that are militant that I know, what I heard. I'm now doing uh, that. I, 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 I'm trying to make that my work and my research has a social contribution more than trying to build inside uh, a party. And actually I left PT in a moment where after the, no, it was before the coup. I don't know 
No, it was 2010. I don't know why uh, PT made a, a coalition, a coalition with PMDB. PMDB, which is a right party, really important in the coup in 2016, but it, it, terrible, terrible, the most terrible politics ever. And we had had some experience with PMDB doing something really bad to PT. And I can't remember what, because there were so many episodes and I really just don't remember. And even though uh, in, a, in a state of the Northeast, PT, the government of, uh, of the state made a coalition with PMDB. And I was like, how is this possible? This, this party just <laughs> uh, work to attack PT, to attack in that time, Lula, I think was still the, the, the president. And uh, no, it was already Dilma, 2010. Uh, and we and we are like doing coalitions with them. This is absurd. And even today, now now in the local elections, in some parts, PT is doing a coalition with these right wing parties. And I don't even know if just because oh PT doesn't have much power, so he does that. I don't know. I, I it's it's too complex for for us to understand this in such a race way, has I don't know, this superficial way. It's much more profound than we say, oh, PT doesn't have strength, so he aligns, I like made an alliance with a, a right-wing party. It's not just that, it's much more, it's layers, much more layers, it's really complex actually. I don't know, I'll try to I try to answer it and that's it. Thank you. <laughs> I hope I could be understood because it was really hard. <laughs> Thank you, Ed. <laughs> I, I don't know if I could start to reply. Yeah, I start to reply now and some questions. The first one is like very linked to my work. And first I would tell like something within the capitalism, but actually is really hard but I think we still have science and the science we have been doing from Kew Gardens we had produced like a report actually the first report from Kew Gardens um, is like the states of the world planting fungi the first report the big report uh, for the states of the plant and fungi as a resource was made and Brazil was the case of study because it was like the most biodiversity country in the world. And uh, Kiel had lots of science from Brazil and interaction and data and Brazil because of those policies from, from 2009. And when Brazil was the first country to achieve the first target of um, GSPC, the global um, strategy for plant conservation, and then Brazil made the um, Flora do Brasil online, is that the Brazilian Flora online, with the name of all of the species, plant species described in Brazil, and and also assessments of risk of extinction. This was a, a really was a, a step which gave like a power for science from Q to, to deep like the research from this, from this point. And then uh, recently we just launched like uh, last month, um, the fourth report states of the world plant and fungi. And this report is much more about how uh, the time is running out like to conserve species and to save the world, um, but also we are losing opportunities to use the resource um, sustainably, but really we could recognize on those resources in plant and fungi, all of the potential for food, for medicine, for energy. Um, and this I think is, we, we don't need like the agribusiness producing only like three grains in the world, like 40, I think it's like 90% of global population 
is relying like in three or four grains to, for food. And we have like more than 7,000 species for food. So we have a huge biodiversity we could use more and without big like lands just producing one grain, which is going to go to feed like cows and livestock, livestock farmings in UK or in the other side of the world. So I think we a way to guarantee protection uh, from environment and also to produce. We have to rely on science and have the government has to trust the scientists like we have biodiversity and we have um, the, the indigenous community or local communities. They are much better to protect the environment and also to produce local food without pesticides and the best quality for in nutrients or everything. So I think it's like a, li a big lie <laughs> we need like those big systems um, just destroying, just putting the forest down and to feed um, with just two types of food or meat or grains to, to feed meat again. And, and for the, but in this system, we have to change the mind and we have to, con science have to convince, I think the conventions from biodiversity and all of this, this um, politics tools or um, strategies, climate change, it's gonna help us to, to change mind. And, and I think from local people, it's much easier, local people to understand, or like common people, us, we, we could understand, like we, we don't want like pesticides in our, in your dish, you know, in your main dish. So I think people is, is changing the system before the system, but it's like a fight. And from Marxism, we, I think in the, in the, first, in the first page of the capital, in some point, Marx talk about the relation between woman and men and the nature using the resource and also our work, the work of women and men is, uh, is related to nature. So when it's like the same people, like is when you see like the indigenous, they, they are the communities, which is like really related to nature. They know the resource, they know how much they could take, up, take to the system to don't, to don't like broke the system taking too much. So um, I think this, could be like a, a point of view. And the capitalism actually is based in, in, you just need, you just generate, like you produce a lot and everything should be like trash and, and actually put for guarantee like the profit. So what make points like all everybody, lots of people in Africa, Brazil, Latin America, dying from hunger and there is lots of food just stretching out and it it's the system to guarantee profit is more um you just yeah you just don't use the food we are you have been producing so in brazil there is like all of the resource in food and water and yeah the my, the big biodiversity in the world so we could use better this. And the other questions, I haven't heard about Bolsonaro giving money to the poor people in Northeast. I think it should be a lie, like fake news. And uh, I, I would say, <laughs> because he never, he could give like one, you know, nothing. Um, Can I say something, Raquel? Can I say something? It's just that uh, I don't know this, this notice that David saw, but recently in the local elections, some, uh, some people that are related to the to Bolsonaro's, you know, parties and all these things, they were given food. I don't say como faz esta básica, Raquel. Anyway, uh, yeah. I don't know, yeah. Food, food. They were giving food to people going to poor uh, places in the city. I think this happened in Rio de Janeiro, actually. Mm. I'm not quite sure. 
but it wasn't actually Bolsonaro and it wasn't Bolsa Familia, but it were people related to the Bolsonaro politic. Yeah. Yeah, it's possible. Oh, everything is the tricks he's doing to retain his position. It's any crazy tricks he's doing. He's lying. He's like, anytime he creates like a crisis in the government and like people is just, it's really, he's doing this, but it's so crazy. And, and when we were discussing here how crazy the things he's doing is, he's like enjoying the moment and with Ricardo Salles, the anti minister of environmental to do whatever they want. And yeah, so a crazy thing they brought to the convention of climate, I think it was in, Fr in China or in France, I can remember, they brought, instead to, brought to, to bring like some scientists to support them, they brought like the Brazilian intelligence um, officers which doesn't make sense. How you get like <laughs> intelligence officer to a, a, conf a convention about climate? It's like this. And uh, ah, and one thing I was thinking when Nada was talking uh, was I, I would come back to the um, Brazil is the country of tomorrow. I think Lula and Dilma, they made a lot was just they was trying to do as much as possible but all of those those government they were like the the better we have in 500 years of story they are doing the possible but they were leaving the worst job when possible if possible for one day a little bit more in front we've got when we got like the third election we are doing to do like some reforms which could be better and better and but the the counterattack, like the other side, is much quick. And for the other side, what in my point of view, like obvious, what Bolsonaro is doing is the opposite. He's doing the worst thing as quick as possible. So in two years, everything he did is much, much worse than we could imagine when he got the power. Because he knows anytime he could he could left. So he is like destroying everything. So it's the example is when he got the, the government, like in 2019, in the first, in the first three months, he just, he just uh, destroyed a law to prohibit sugar cane in Amazon and Pantanal. This law was made in 2009 for, from Lula government and was really clearly telling we can't allow the, like sugar cane in wetlands and in Amazon because we are going to change all of the water system because Amazon has like the rivers, the float, flying rivers. You know, when the Amazon produce water, wetlands from Pantanal produce the water, which became rain in Sao Paulo, in Rio, in the south of Brazil. And they know if there is sugar cane, they have to cut everything down and you have to put fire and then <laughs> you just have the smog and nothing is the rain just going to stop in, in the south of Brazil. And Bolsonaro destroyed the law. This year, Pantanal was, the wetland was completely like un burning and people in Sao Paulo just saw like a very, very black sky and the rain was black as well. So it's like the scientists is really sure what's gonna happen if you allowed like sugar cane in Pantanal and Amazon. And because of this, this law was really important. So Kew Gardens in this report talk, talk about this. This law was destroyed by Bolsonaro and he made like in three months in the government. So he's doing as quick as possible to because he knows he could left quick and because there is so many things against him like the moderate of Marielle Franco all of the other <laughs> attacks so yeah is is everything is related he's not just corrupt he's like a he's linked to the organized crime and it's clearly you know every everybody knows him from the past not from now knows how is like how is related with the organizing crime. 
and uh, how to develop the united left front but i think maybe we could we could just bring our friends and say i like you let's do like let's support our g friends and let's try to unite outside and let's see how it's going to do i think when people has more access to the university like the was a kind of massification we were when we in china we were in the student movement in the university we were really against heuni which was a program to to just create full many many positions in the university like quickly and for with few money we were like occupying like the university and trying to discuss as much as possible and to delay as much as possible to to say okay you could do this but we need more money we don't need to follow the bachelor like the uh interdisciplinary bachelor bachelors from uh portugal i do remember, i can i forgot this but the name of the the thing but we don't have to follow the same the same um rule which destroy like the the best degree and the best education we have because we have we are putting like few money on it so but was the best thing in the end is like do this and happens and actually I, i make the balance now and i think was the best thing that pt could could do in that moment is like as minimal as possible but but at least in that moment the work class access to the university much easier with and with uh, like a unificated exams and everything and these people which got the university and the schools from that time is i think is the people reaction reacting and more organized now against bolsonaro or in the in the like um municipal elections and other movements Okay, uh, Rika. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Look, um, maybe let's put uh, bring some points together. Thanks very much for for your point. Um, could I make some closing remarks and um, and then uh, I'll ask Roger to make a statement too. Um, you know, it's been a fantastic discussion, and I'm really so proud that we've had first class interventions. You know, by by women socialists. You know, it, it, I, ha I have to say it's 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 really impressive. We've seen uh, a wide span of uh, of, of uh, issues which have been raised, and are concerned about the environmental devastation, about building a united front. Not that we can actually resolve that issue just yet, but uh, work in that pro in that way. And could I say that we want to continue these links? Um, we've started a a WhatsApp group, uh, which is called the Brazilian Marxist uh, group. But those who are not yet fully fully Marxist are very welcome to join. Um, so we, you know, Nara and uh, Silvana and so forth, we'd love to keep in touch with you. If you could give us uh, numbers or emails, rather than numbers, I think, and share them with uh, Raquel, uh, we'd add you to that. And we won't pester you with uh, postings every day, but only important uh, important material uh, so, you know that would be a marvelous way of of taking it uh, you know taking our discussion forward can i uh, just say you know the comparisons which are south south when i hear about you know the health of sugarcane workers i just just a few points in relation to sugarcane in south africa you know in the past it was uh, the sugarcane was cut uh, with with the leaves on now it's burnt there are massive fires you know throughout the rural areas before the harvest and the workers have to go in there uh, without gloves uh, with cane cane knives and to cut that uh, sugar cane down because it's on hills it can't be mechanized easily um, and it's absolutely devastating work they say that the workers need two or three gallons of water a day you know to work in the in those fields and because they're so poor in South Africa, they feed them offal. Offal is the cheapest, cheapest meat uh, that they give to the workers. And then for days before they work, they just feed them with offal to be able to build up their bodily strength and to get them out. 
And because of the strenuousness of the work, they found that men can't keep up to it. And if you go on the fields and in, in uh, sugarcane fields and in, in KwaZulu Natal, where I come from, you'll see it's nearly all women now. Women can actually survive better under those extraordinary hot conditions and survive under those uh, conditions. So, you know, it's become a feminized occupation. If you could believe the hardest work possible in, in the world is <laughs> being now being done by, by women. And we'd like to share, you know, I'd like to share with you, uh, Taina, some, some research, you know, that's been undertaken on that. Absolutely horrific conditions, you know, which are being reproduced now in Brazil. And, you know, the discussion we had makes, makes links right across from Kew Gardens. Well, in reading about Kew, then I, I, I've, I've noticed that uh, Darwin actually visited uh, Brazil and made some remarks and made some observations. So the Kew Gardens is not just a nice, pretty set of flowers and so forth, as uh, Raquel would, would only be too pleased to explain. You know, that is the repository of so many colonial plants you know, plants and, 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 and the, the dream of the, you know, the, the imperialists at the time was that they'd find a miracle crop, which would bring immense wealth uh, to the world. And unfortunately we got stuck with sugar, which rots our teeth. And that's the best, uh, you know, that, that they could do. I should also mention that Raquel writes a column in a magazine, I think it's Nature, but it's also in, in Brazilian as well. And she has to do that work. Uh, and so it keeps in touch, you know, in that way. China, I know that you're doing work all, you know, all the time in, in, in writing and research and that you're a real, you know, a real fighter there, you know, you know, to change things. So we could, we want to keep in touch. We, you know, it's so important that we are in touch. If you are right now, as we are speaking, um, Bolsonaro is trying to sabotage the, the uh, conference on biodiversity that's been held by the United Nations. Um, and the, the argument that he's putting forward, or at least his people are putting forward, is that it's, it's the same as the uh, Republicans and in, in, in here in, in the States, is that it's impossible, it's not democratic to a people to uh, vote online. You must be there in person. And if you're not there in person, then you can't possibly have a convention. You cannot have any agreement. So there's sabotage at every level being undertaken uh, to break up any international control over the over the devastation which we see in the Amazon and and elsewhere, I don't think I'll say much more. Please give us the links we we you can so that we can keep in touch, and that we can integrate you know your work with the work that we are doing uh, in um, in when internationally, uh, and make sure that uh, you know these debates, these discussions, these concerns are intimately tied up with the future in Europe, in South Africa, in America and elsewhere. Because the fate of the Amazon, as we always are told, is the fate of the world. And so Brazil is right there in the fulcrum of, of things. So thanks very much, Tena. Thanks, Raquel. And thanks for all those who've made a contribution. I do hope that we'll be able to get some of the uh, discussion up um, on, on our website and also some notes and maybe an article you know, to, to develop you know, many of these themes. And we're all working on the broad theme, building the United Front, building the left and bringing workers to power in Brazil. Thank you so much. <laughs>